So now what I want to do is look at the construction of a discrete time PID controller. So initially we start off with an equation that shows a proper integral and derivative function for real-time systems. But when it comes to discrete time systems, we are not continuously evaluating the difference between our process variable and our set point. Instead, what we are doing is computations in between discrete time samples. So at even time intervals, we take a snapshot of what the instantaneous PV and SP values are at that moment, and then we go off and we do the CV calculation or control variable from the point of view of a PI or PID controller. So the equation then becomes, instead of using integrals, we use sigma to show that we are summing mathematical or computational terms over time. And in the case of the proportional, whatever the instantaneous difference is between the set point and the PV gives us our error value and we simply scale that by the proportional gain and we get a number. When it comes to the derivative, we look at what is the error at the moment we look at it and we subtract from that what the error was before that. So a derivative is based on a difference equation. So we take the difference of what we now know from what we used to know, and from that we then derive a slope. And that's effectively what a discrete derivative is doing, is it's giving us the slope based on two points, one from the past, one from the present. In a way, the derivative is a little bit future-looking, because what the derivative is trying to do is get a sense of where things are going. And so a derivative component tries to project a future outcome and respond to that in the moment. The integral, on the other hand, does something different. The integral is all about looking backwards in order to remember what offset or minimum value was needed on CV in order to maintain equilibrium between our set point and our process variable. So the integral is accruing knowledge from the past. So whereas the proportional seems to live in the present, the derivative is sort of future looking, the integral is really about remembering the past. And when we look at the next chart, what, we're going, what we are going to see is that at discrete time intervals, we are sampling the PV and the SP values, we have a step response, and then we calculate an error. So the error is shown as a red curve, the blue curve is shown the process variable for our application, and then the, the green line is simply our set point. And as we go through there, you will see how the error is calculated. And sometimes the error is positive when the set point is larger than the process variable, and then sometimes the error goes negative. Now, having achieved our error signal, we then want to do some action on that, and that's where we bring in our PID controller. So this next slide is all about looking at how does the software generate the, P the proportional term and the derivative, and then we will look at the integral later. So if you look at the first slide, what we are doing is sampling at TS is equal to two. So TS is my sampling period. The sampling rate is the reciprocal of your sampling period. And so the sampling rate is frequency. But right now we're looking at TS in terms of time units. So the horizontal axis is broken up into uh, time units. So with TS is equal to 2, we pan across the screen with our error signal. And while it's doing that, it's generating out a proportional error and, uh, sorry, a proportional term, which is your proportional gain KP times your error, and also a derivative term, which is looking at the rate of change. So it looks at the error at one time minus the previous error, and then divides it by TS, or sorry, multiplies it by TS. So also in the picture is the equation. So if you're looking at the equation behind me, the equation shows that the derivative is not independent of the sampling time but rather a function of it. In the next slide, we're going to look at what happens if we shorten that time sample. So we bring the sampling time to one time unit instead of two time units. Now we see that the 
proportional seems to be getting more accurate. So we're getting a higher resolution in the proportional, but in terms of amplitude, the proportional doesn't really change. It is, after all, just looking at what is the actual difference between the set point PV or what is the error at that moment, and it scales it by the KP value and it maintains the amplitude. But because you're sampling more quickly now, you're getting finer detail relative to the error signal. But something is changing with the derivative. If I look at the derivative when I sample faster, I notice that the area under the curve is now half of what it was when the sample time was every two time units. So it turns out that the effective gain of a digital derivative isn't strictly controlled by your KD or, or derivative gain, but it's also controlled by how fast you're sampling. The faster you sample, the smaller the difference becomes between the new error and the old error, and that has the effect of making the gain appear smaller. So if you're developing a digital PID controller, bear in mind that the sampling rate affects the gain of the derivative term. Now we're going to look at the integral. So this time we introduce a step error and we're just going to look at the response of an integral function with time units of two. And you can see that it keeps building up as a staircase, the overall integral. And the integral is made up of two parts. One is called the integral term and one is called the integral sum. The integral sum is what you had before. It was the accrued total area under the curve that you had it so, some time before. The integral term is the instantaneous value you determine at a given moment, time n if you like, and it is the kp, or sorry, the ki value times the error. And that gives you this green square behind me on the curve. The blue regions on the plot simply show you what the sum was in the past. The total integral is your integral term plus all the previous sums. And so it keeps building up. So you're always adding this finite amount when you have this constant error. In practice, you don't want a constant error. You want that error to get smaller and smaller. When the error goes to zero, then the integral will stop building up because the integral term will calculate to be zero. But just like it was true in the case of the derivative, so is it also true for the integral that it's also a function of the sampling time. So now if we look at what happens when I lengthen that sample time. So instead of sampling every two time units, I sample in four time units. Now what we see is that it's going to take longer to build up my integral because I'm taking that much longer to add up each one of these same error units. So for a constant error, the size of the integral term is going to be the same for each addition, but because I'm performing fewer additions at a time, I simply take longer to build up. Now if I go to a time sample one, we get the opposite effect. Now you're starting to see the integral rise very rapidly. So again, as it was for the derivative, if you change the time that you sample, you change the gain. So technically, the formula shows that the gain for the integral is ki divided by the sample time. The smaller the sample, the larger the effective gain. The larger the sample period, the smaller the effective gain. Are you guys getting that? Good. We're going to be looking at some other stuff in a sec.